you for your patience and um, being willing to stand under a little bit of shade where you can find it. But um, I'm Teresa Wilson, city manager for the city of Columbia. And it was very important and fitting that we wanted to have this press conference today at this location um, because it's um, a milestone moment from where we found ourselves nine years ago to the day. Um, I want to acknowledge so many elected officials, regulatory staff, visitors um, who have follow this journey with us, been a part of the journey in many ways. Um, thank you, Congressman Joe Wilson, for being here. We wanted to make sure that he um, was in place so that we could hear from him in a little while. Many other uh, federal member, members of the federal delegation who couldn't be here but are represented by their staff um, to include, I think, Lee Blackwell, Leah Blackwell with the congressman's office and maybe Alex Morris, I'm not sure if they're all here. Mr. John Rickenbacker from U.S. Representative James Clyburn's office, thank you, sir, for being here. Our Senator Nikki Setzler is here. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. I know Senator uh, or Representative Chris Hart is also due to arrive shortly. So we thank all of our state federal, local officials, officials who've supported us throughout this whole process. It's very key for us to say thank you because it has taken millions of dollars for us to get to the point where we are today. And you'll hear about what that means for our canal recovery process. Um, of course, Mayor Daniel Rickman is here. And you'll hear from him shortly, as well as our um, Mayor Pro Tem, Will Brennan, and council member at large. Tyler Bailey, so thank you, gentlemen, for being here as well. Federal and state agency representatives to include uh, several members from Charleston, I believe, of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineer, Engineers, our acting commander, Major Patrick Ripton, I believe. Um, please wave your hand or be acknowledged. Uh, senior civilian, Ms. Lisa Matheny, and uh, the team leader for the Charleston District, Laura M. Booz. We also have members of our Columbia team for HUD, the field director, Christine Foy, and Ms. Sherry Copeland. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Um, of course, we have our South Carolina Emergency Management Division Chief of Staff, Steve Batson, who will speak, and I believe members of the Survey and Review and Compliance with State Historic Preservation Office John Sylvester, Elizabeth Johnson as well. And then too many people to name um, by name, but many members of our partners in the community and stakeholders to include Dominion Energy, McClam, um, MBCon, Chow and Associates, Mike Dawson with the River Alliance, Bill Stangler, the Congaree Riverkeeper, I think um, Bob McClam was here, I believe. Rusty. Ru is it Rusty? I'm sorry, Rusty. And is Mr. Bill Edmonds here with MBCon? Hey, Bill. And I saw Jimmy Chow as well and his team. Hey, Jimmy. So we thank you all. Um, oh, and Bill Yarbrough is Bill here with Dominion. They're a little busy these days. So we understand that some other members of FEMA who wanted to be here certainly had to be redirected as well as Dominion Energy. So charge it to my head and on my heart. If I left anyone out, um, I certainly did not mean to. Um, but it's very important. And again, we thank you all for attending this important briefing. Nine years ago, we did utilize the same venue and backdrop to brief our citizens about the devastation that was occurring around them. And you would see us up here day after day sharing information uh, many times, and I can say this personally, um, holding back tears and trying to put on the good fight and a good front. So we are really thankful as we see the devastation in North Carolina and across the Southeast that we're not back in that place again this time. We are, want to say thank you to our regulatory officials who've helped us on the journey um, towards recovery and a full recovery. 
um, and we'll describe that major construction that will be happening along our canal in the very near future. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our mayor, Daniel Rickman, to give his remarks to be followed by our assistant city manager for Columbia Water, Clint Sheely, and also Mr. Batson, as I mentioned, with South Carolina EMD and other elected officials, um, but to include Representative Joe Wilson, who's joined us here at the podium. So with that, Mayor Rickman, I'll hand it over to you. Good afternoon. It's a, it's it's a you know we we're, it's starting to be a theme. Every day is a great day in Columbia, and we're excited. But especially today, and coming the heels off the hurricane, made us really remind us. It's almost to the day, you know, in 2015 when we had the flood, when we had power outages and trees, and there was lots of rumors flying around about water systems and others. So it's appropriate that we're here today to talk about reconstituting our, our historic and beautiful Columbia Canal, portions that were constructed over 200 years ago and serves as our primary water supply. You know, people forget that this canal, well, there's only two canals like this in the state, one in Union and one here. Both of them have historic hydro plants as well, which we'll talk about later and excited about being able to bring it out. But when you have over 200,000 residents being served by a water system, five major hospitals, six colleges and universities, 30 plus fire stations, 16 police stations, numerous government facilities stretch from one end of this city and county to the other. Let's not forget our two military bases that are here, Fort Jackson and um, McIntyre Joint uh, Army, uh, and uh, National Guard base, but also remember these five hospitals that we have here, also one of them is a level one trauma facility for the Midlands area, which really is about a 16 county area. So it is very important that we protect our system. The stability, capacity, the function of the canal, we're gonna work on that, that's our next project. Get some muffler repairs. Um, Severe, severely jeopardized, you know, with the 2015 flood. The hydro plant generating station just behind us was constructed 130 years ago. It was the first fully electrified textile, textile mill in the world, right here, right here in this. So this carries not only the historic value of our canal, but the hydro plant as well. Until 2015, it was generating up to 10 megawatts of good, clean, green power every day. And obviously, as we had to shut it down with the temporary repairs that were done that diminished its use from that disaster. Today, we are proud to announce the major progress on our efforts to repair not only the damage to this historic canal and this historic hydro plant, but the investment in multiple projects that make us stronger and more resilient. Thanks to our federal and state elected officials. And I have to say personally, Congressman Clyburn and Senator Graham went out of their way to really help us with this situation. They were there on the phone, the two of them making conference calls across to the White House, across to every agency, um, FEMA, FERC, helping us every way. And then Congressman Joe Wilson coming in and bringing that reinforcement right behind, pushing those efforts to make sure. And we can't thank everybody enough, especially our state officials here in our agencies. We're grateful for the cooperation of our partners at FEMA, who led the environmental assessment, embankment recover, resilient water supply projects, and provided significant funding through the public assistance program really helping us get to where we are today. And we're gonna talk about those numbers shortly. As mentioned before, our South Carolina Emergency Management Division, who was there at every step of the way. And believe it or not, being able to work with agencies across and being creative about how we work together, the HUD, Housing and Urban Development, coming through with the repair of our head gates to allow water into this canal. Our community block grant mitigation program with the majority of funding for replacement of this equipment. And then finally, our friends at FERC, who provided review, oversight, our repairs and improvement projects, which is not an easy process as we all know. 
think it might have been quite painful at a time for everybody to get through, but a necessary step. But together, we anticipate the total funding between our federal partners, our state partners, approximately 120 million, which 100 of that is from our federal and state uh, agencies. So let, let's give them a hand. Because not only is, it, is this canal vital for our water system and for our potential green power to get us to that renewable, as you know, we're very proud to be the only gold certified lead city in South Carolina and one only 40 cities across the U.S., but it's also an important part to our history, to our public recreation opportunities, to our community, and access to our river. And we really want to thank two other uh, groups that were very important to this project and to the future of this project, which is the River Alliance and Boyd Foundation. Without the two of them, we won't have the connectivity to the greenways, which is going to be one of our number one tourist attractions. You think we're, we're full of tourists now at 16 million. Wait till we have 27 miles of trail. The ability to leave Columbia without ever getting in your car and going to West Columbia to, to go by uh, Senator Sessler's house and have coffee and then cut across the canal to run over to the zoo and, and spend a little day. Make your way up to the dam and see that beautiful stretch of the Saluda that you don't see. And on your way back, you're gonna cross over the railroad tracks jump into Elmwood Park and make your way over to Segra Park, a little baseball in the afternoon, make your way back down to the Vista for a nightcap and dessert. And that's what I call a beautiful day in Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. My name is Clint Sheely. I'm one of the assistant city managers um, and, and have responsibility for working with the Columbia Water Team. First of all, I want to say our, our thoughts and prayers go out to those impacted by Hurricane Helene, um, both in our community and our state, but also to our friends in neighboring states. It's heartbreaking some of the images that we're seeing. Um, our partners at FEMA were excited about being here today to make this announcement, but they've got other duties that are, that are more important right now to take care of. So immediately in the aftermath of Hurricane Joaquin, we made a commitment to our elected officials, to Ms. Wilson, to our customers and citizens, that we were going to build back our infrastructure, not just to return it to its operating status in 2015, but we were going to build it back stronger and more resilient than it was um, so we can have assurance of safe drinking water, abundant supply moving forward. Today, we're on the cusp of honoring that commitment. I'm really excited about that. A couple of thank yous before we talk details about the projects. Um, I want to thank those that helped us design and, and construct a temporary pumping system that kept our water supply going in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Joaquin. And then we'll talk about, thank those folks that helped us develop what I call a robust interim solution, which is this rock dam that's behind us. Um, it served us well for the past nine years. McClam Construction, Bob and Rusty are here. Thank you for your efforts in Be Kind, Bill, your team. Thank you so much. The Army National Guard, you remember helicopters, Chinook helicopters dropping sandbags um, nine years ago. Consultants like Jimmy Chow and his team, AECOM, Hazen, Black and Beach, pump and material suppliers, and also our neighbors from Casey and West Columbia that came to our aid. Without these collective efforts, our water supply crisis nine years ago would have been much, much more severe. So thank you for, for that. As we look to present day, I want to thank our consulting team, Michael Baker and Associates, Kyle, your, your team. have done fantastic work for us leading these projects, along with Hazen and Sawyer, F&ME, Chow and Associates, Klein Smith, Landmark, all those folks. Thank you for your technical experts, expertise, and your commitment to designing the right solutions to help us recover. As the mayor and Ms. Wilson mentioned, our partnerships with FEMA, FERC, HUD, and other agencies such as the Army Corps of Engineers, um, Fish and Wildlife, uh, Department of Environmental Services, and SHPO have been instrumental in moving this work forward. And finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize our city staff and team that helped us put this event on and have helped us every step of the way over the last nine years. Missy Gentry and the other assistant city managers, thank you so much. Uh, Missy Kaufman, who couldn't be here today, Gregory Tucker, 
who is with us, our project manager, Frank Eskridge, our director of utilities, Dr. Alejandra Bayer, our drinking water compliance manager, city procurement and finance teams, parks and recreation, community development, and last but not least, our former director of utilities, Joey Jaco, who is now the executive director for East Richland Public Service District. Joey, we started this just journey together. Thank you for being here as we as we move to the next stage. And thanks to the folks at Adventure and the State Museum for letting us park and use this facility. We really appreciate that. So today, we are so pleased to share our progress on three very important projects. And our recovery would not be complete without each of these three projects. We like to refer to it as our three-legged stool of resilience. Um, and again, we're not stable and we're not where we want to be unless we construct and complete all three of these projects. So let's start upstream, about three and a half miles upstream from here at the Headgate structure. That's where the water from the Broad River enters our historic Columbia Canal. During 2015 flood event, debris washed into the head gates and it limited the ability for us to lower those head gates and choke off that flow from coming into our canal system. That limitation was a contributing factor to the overtopping of water in the embankment that caused the breach just behind us right upstream of the hydroelectric generating station. Currently, one of those head gates is operable 11 of the 12 have bulkheads plated on, so they're inoperable, and that's how we're controlling flow into the canal right now. So the, the head gate repair project is gonna entail removing those steel plates, replacing all of the 12 head gates with modern equipment, screw and jack type operators capable of exerting more closing force, There'll be provisions for backup power. There'll be a trash rack upstream to help us control that debris. And finally, we're going to have rock anchors installed on the stone dam to give us more stability to withstand flooding events and seismic events in the future. So very, very important work to secure the head gate structure and the operability there. We anticipate that that project's going to cost about $12 million Roughly half of that is being funded by our friends at HUD. Thank you through the Community Development Block Mitigation Grant. We really appreciate that. That construction is scheduled to start in August of 2025. And there'll be about 15 months of construction and then that portion, that piece of the puzzle, that leg of the stool will be complete. So let's move downstream to where we are now. Let's talk about the necessary repairs to our embankment. Obviously, there's a large bre breach in the, in the background here in the embankment and severe damage to our hydroelectric generating facility just behind me. That facility, as the mayor said, remains inoperable today. We're losing out on the opportunity to generate good green power each day that we're offline. Due to the low levels of water and the high velocities that were encountered immediately following the flood after the river receded, there was significant scour and damage along the toe of the embankment, all the way up to the head gates. Very difficult to see whenever the early damage assessments were done, but our team of technical consultants used very sophisticated methods to demonstrate that that damage was indeed there and it needed to be repaired to, to repair the stability of the slope and the integrity of our embankment. So what does that embankment repair project, the second leg of our resilient stool, entail? We're going to be removing um, about 1,275 linear feet of old embankment where the breach occurred from the hydro up to the bridge in the background, the Jarvis Crapman Bridge. We're going to be rebuilding and reconstructing the embankment in that area. It's going to be about 175,000 cubic yards of earthwork occurring there necessary to perform and reconstruct that dike. We're going to provide armament, vegetative restoration, and landscaping repairs in the area as well. I mentioned the scour along the toe of the slope of the embankment and, and how damaging that was even though you can't see it um, because of the water level. Um, we're going to be repairing almost two and, a half linear, two and a half miles of embankment, arming that, fortifying that against future events like the one we had earlier this week including about 90,000 tons of stone, 40,000 cubic yards of earthwork to fortify um, from the jarvis Clapman Bridge up to the head gates in, in various spots. Some of these towers that you see the Dominion Electrical Lines on, these lattice-type towers, 
those are going to be replaced with monopoles. The, the power lines will be raised so we can do our work underneath those active power lines. Those are very important transmission mains that can't remain out of service. So that's some of the early work that will be happening before we start moving, moving dirt back here. Our hydroelectric facility is going to be renovated. We're really excited about that. We're going to get back in the business of good green power. Also, we don't, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention the cultural and historic, historic nature of the canal, of the hydroelectric station, of the previous hydroelectric station um, that predates the current um, station behind us. Um, we want to honor that history. Part of the early work will be excavation and archaeological reviews that are happening where the, where the, um, the main earthwork is going to happen for the repair of the bridge. So, a lot of that will happen. We're going to honor the history. There are going to be storyboards put up. We've entered into a memorandum of agreement and understanding with SHPO um, and that, that dictates how we do that work. And FEMA is going to help us fund that and honor the history and the rich traditions that we have here. So I'm looking forward to that and repairing park structures and, and, and moving toward that connectivity that the mayor talked about. Really excited about that. You're looking at about 27 months of construction to do all this heavy civil work that we just talked about. That will also start in August of 2025 and ending in December of 2027. The project that I just described, that second leg, is estimated to cost about $60 million. That $60 million is being funded, reimbursable funds through FEMA's public assistance program and through the state of South Carolina. So we're really excited about that work. That will restore our canal, our hydroelectric station, improve our head gates back to the condition that we were in 2015. When I first started off, I mentioned that we wanted to be in better position than we were in 2015. And that's where the third leg of our resilient stool comes in. That's our resilient water supply project. It's going to provide even greater security for our water supply. We're going to have a new drinking water intake a few hundred yards downstream of Interstate 126 coming into town, the Congaree River. New infrastructure constructed to today's seismic standards, to today's flood standards, modern pumping facility, and it's going to secure our water supply, and it'll be completely independent of the existing canal system. So about 80 million gallons of pumping capacity will be installed in that new intake. Um, uh, semi-circular barrel screens in the river itself. That project, we anticipate the cost a little over $46 million. We open bids for that project next Thursday. So that is the first step of construction. We're really excited that FEMA helped us um, and SCE&D helped us secure a building resilient infrastructure and communities grant to the tune of $32.6 million of that is going to be funded. Um, by, by federal dollars. So very excited about that. Again, that project open bids next week. We expect construction to start in December of this year. That one's going to take about 30 months to complete. It's again, a major civil works project in the river. Some of the first activities that you're going to see will be associated with that alternate water supply. But then it'll be closely followed by the archaeological investigation work that we mentioned for the embankment repair and Dominion's work to um, take care of some of the lattice structures and install those monopoles that we talked about behind us. That work needs to happen preceding the, the work that we're going to do to recover the embankment. Um, so then you'll get the bidding and construction in late next summer for the head gates and embankment recovery project. And we're going to work with the contractors as best we can to limit any closures and impacts along Riverfront Park. But I must say the nature of the work that we're doing is going to necessitate some closures. But again, we're going to work, try to schedule that as best we can and minimize any, um, any disruption. The culmination of these projects, as the mayor said, $120 million of investment in our infrastructure and in the future of water supply for our community, with about $100 million of that being provided through state and local funding, public assistance. It's been a very long road. But we are so happy to be at this point. And once again, so grateful to our partners for helping us reach this milestone. Thank you.
Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Batson. I'm the South Carolina Emergency Management Division's Chief of Staff, and it's an honor to be here today. The mission of the South Carolina Emergency Management Division is to lead the state emergency management program by supporting local authorities to minimize the loss of life and property from all hazard events. Supporting the City of Columbia is a, a key step in that, and as you've heard, there's some significant project work in, in the midst. SEMD is dedicated to working hand in hand with the City of Columbia in full, ensuring full support throughout the Columbia Canal repair projects. In collaboration with FEMA, with several, several federal grant programs, we are committed to overcoming recovery challenges, streamlining processes, and mobilizing all available resources to see this project work complete. We're committed to help return the Columbia Canal to its pre-existing function, capacity, and design while supporting the resilience effort to build back stronger with a more secure and sustainable water supply source that will support and protect generations to come here in the Columbia area. My main point here today is to really just stress that this is a sign of hope. As South Carolina faces yet another ongoing challenge, including the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, progress with the Columbia Canal Project highlights that there is hope and recovery following any form of destruction. This project, or these projects showcase the project, uh, sorry, these projects highlight the, the ability for the Columbia Canal Projects to meet and exceed recovery rebuilds. This project also showcases the strength and determination of the City of Columbia to rebuild in the face of challenges. It not only addresses immediate needs by repairing the critical infrastructure, but it also looks forward to the future. This project is a testament to Team South Carolina's resilience, a cooperation of federal, state, local, private, nonprofit entities all working together to see the City of Columbia meet its challenges for the future. It serves as a model of how communities can rebuild stronger and more sustainable from natural events. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, and uh, the friends and citizens of the Midlands, I'm Joe Wilson, uh, grateful to be a member of Congress. It's particularly significant, uh, and I appreciate being here, and that my grandfather's office was right here at the SO Standard Oil uh, building, uh, Standard Oil, New Jersey, uh, and he um, was the person who engineered to provide that building to the city of Columbia when they relocated their main office to Charlotte. And so uh, it's really special to be here. Also, it's special to be here with Senator Sessler, uh, bipartisan, we work together for the uh, museum, the State Museum, and Ed Venture to be here. And so I'm very, very grateful to see the, again, bipartisanship. And then with Congressman Clyburn, uh, working together on this uh, project. And if there's an infrastructure issue in the Midlands, we're together. And particularly working together for Fort Jackson issues and Savannah Riverside, you could go on and on. And I'm just so grateful again for the leadership of Lindsey Graham and Tim Scott. Uh, as a federal team working together. Also, maybe even more remarkable than bipartisan is bi-county. And so to see the, uh, the leadership of Mayor Rickman, uh, indeed, uh, city council, uh, the county the city administrator, uh, my cousin, Terry Wilson, I'm just, uh, I'm really grateful that uh, working together, uh, Mayor Elise Parton, uh, uh, Fort Granby, uh, the uh, greenway that's being developed. I was there earlier this week to see the consequence of flooding. And then working together with Mayor Tim Miles of West Columbia, and then amazingly enough, all the way to uh, the Republic of Irmo to, uh, with Mayor Bill Danielson, and to know that uh, we have a, uh, the greenway, as described, all the way from Granby to Lake Murray Dam. And that's again by county working together. So it's so inspiring. And then Tragically ironic, what we've gone through the last week. Um, it's very appropriate that last Thursday night, um, when I flew in from Washington, the first place I went was to the Emergency Preparedness Division. And with my background as a staff judge advocate for the Army National Guard, I knew that what you had to do was hope for the best, as I told them, and also prepare for the worst. Well, it was worse than worse. And so I'm gonna commend Governor Henry McMaster for bringing our state together I was with him in Aiken on Sunday. Uh, indeed, it looked like a war zone. Uh, the trees down, the beautiful trees that uh, we all love in South Carolina and treasure. And I have seen 
uh, our communities come together uh, and the consequence of working together, and it may have taken nine years to get this done, but people are working together. And I'm confident, and when you get Lisa Matheny here, uh, all the way from Charleston, uh, with the Corps of Engineers, we're doing good. And so I'm grateful that every level of government, municipal, county, state, federal, are working together, and we can count on that, I believe, as we recover from Hurricane Helene. And so over and over again, I'm just very grateful to represent this community and uh, look forward to uh, continued success. God bless you. Thank you. Well, we will open it up for question and answer. Um, court, of course, Clint already did this for me, but as the manager, I really have to underscore the thanks that he's given to all of our partners, but I have to thank the staff. I mean, they are the most capable, dedicated public servants you'll ever meet. Um, we really take the work to heart. Um, it brings us joy to see the light now that we see and that we hope our community will see for all of um, the angst that we all felt nine years ago to begin to turn the corner and see the light of day and have uh, a redundant, um, safe, secure uh, water source for this community just means more than we could ever put into words. But I want to say thank you to Clint because, you know, with all of the many moving parts and all of the staff that has been addressed, you still have to have the glue. You have to have someone who's driving at home every single day, and he has done that, and I appreciate him and his expertise very, very much. Thank you, Clint.